Okay, welcome to the third in our series of four short videos looking at the economics of price discrimination. Let's just spend a few minutes thinking about some good examples of and analysis of third degree price discrimination. Well, some examples include things like uh, theatres and cinemas. So the ticket price for someone like a film showing at view would uh, will vary perhaps by age. There might be a, a discount for senior citizens. The price might vary by time of film showing. And in some cases, the ticket price might vary by the location of the of the cinema where income levels might be different. Students often get uh, significant discounts on the products they buy. Many venues offer price discounts for students who typically have a lower income, a reduced spending power and uh, therefore a, a more price sensitive demand. In other words, the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is, is probably higher. That's also true for things like old age pensioners as well. And car insurance has become very topical recently. Uh, there's been some evidence that the car insurance companies have been charging a higher price for more loyal customers. Customers who typically tend to, uh, if you like, auto update, auto renew their car insurance. There's something called price walking, which is a long standing sort of strategy of some insurance companies where customers who have been uh, loyal to an insurance company actually faced higher prices than new customers. That's now been made illegal, by the way, and we'll cover that in video four. So how does third degree price discrimination work for the supplier? What kind of analysis diagram can you bring to bear to score top marks in an exam? Well, I'm going to show you two diagrams. One is the more complex one. We'll walk through that one. And then I'll show you a slightly more simple, straightforward diagram. Both will be fine for the exam. Essentially, third degree discrimination involves segmenting the market. Think of a think of a chocolate orange and all the lovely little segments in there. Smash it on the desk and you can segment the orange. Well, third degree discrimination is a little bit like that because essentially you're trying to segment the market into different groups, identifiable groups of consumers. So here's my slightly more complex diagram where the whole market for something can be split into market A and market B. So you need three diagrams, three X and Y axes for this. Let's assume, for example, you have a one group, let's call it market A, uh, with a relatively priced inelastic demand. Whereas in market B, the people who inhabit that sub-market tend to be perhaps consumers, uh, students or OAPs. Their demand is more price sensitive and more, more consumers are not willing or able to pay high prices. So you've got two distinct groups, market A and B. Now, if we add the demand up for the whole market, you get a slightly quirky demand uh, and, and marginal revenue curves. So don't worry too much about that. But the key is if, if we take the whole market together, we might want to profit maximize where marginal cost meets marginal revenue at output Q1. Can you see that on the right hand side? That allows, it would allow us to set a price and also have a cost. So we could set the price of P1, the cost is C1, and that means, of course, that there is a, uh, a, uh, a profit to be made. If you just charged a single price, you could indeed make a profit, and that's shown by the green area. But of course, the whole idea behind price discrimination is that you're trying to make a bigger profit than that. You're trying to do better than that. So this is where you can think about the different sub-markets to the left of the right-hand side. Now, assuming that the, each sub-market costs the same in terms of supply. So if I'm in market A and you're in market B, we're going to assume here that the supplier can supply to both of us at the same marginal or average cost. And that's that little simplifying assumption. So I've gone from right to left. If you think about market A, you can profit maximise in that segment of the market by charging a high price, let's call it PA, because of course demand is more price inelastic. Consumers perhaps are willing and able to pay more uh, for that product. Whereas in market B, well, you wouldn't charge the same price there because consumers are more price sensitive. In fact, you'd lower the price. Can you see that PB price PB is lower than price P1 and quite a bit lower than price PA. Of course, that brings consumers into the market and you'll probably sell 
quite a significant quantity, let's call it Q2. So market B has a high price elasticity of demand and you'll tend to charge a lower price, whereas market A has a low coefficient of price elasticity of demand and therefore you can charge a high profit maximising price. And in terms of profit, well profit in market A is shown by the orange shaded area because price is above cost and there's a profit also to be made in, in market um, uh, B. You see, if the cost of supply is the same to both markets, you can still make a profit, even if you have differential pricing. Now, to the naked eye, I think the two areas of the orange areas, the profit from each group, probably, I hope, are bigger than the green area on the right-hand side. So third-degree discrimination can lead to higher revenues, for sure, higher sales, yes, but also higher profits. And this is a, a super diagram to draw. If you've practiced this in the exam, you can draw it fairly quickly, but you will need to practice but we get top analysis marks. Now, there's a slightly easier diagram, and uh, this is the one. I'm just going to go back a slide for you. There's the super complicated one. There's the simpler one. I've just basically taken the third diagram out of the equation and just said, look, we've got two markets here. Um, Market A and market B, exactly the same as before. I'm assuming that the cost of supply to each market is the same. Now make clear in your analysis that you are assuming a constant cost of supply, constant returns, marginal cost and average cost are the same. So providing the price charge to each group is higher than cost, then you can still make a profit, just tweak this one, even selling the product to some people at a low price in market B. Now, hopefully, that makes clear the analysis for third-degree price discrimination. In the last video of this set of four, we'll think about the welfare effects of this pricing strategy. Okay, thank you.